good morning students as we have finished uh, unit 1 uh, business activities now we are going to unit 2 forms of business organizations and in this we will be seeing about sole proprietorship the first type of business organization so learning objectives let us see what are the what are the things that we are going to learn in this unit so we are going to see the forms of business organization the meaning of sole trader characteristics of sole trader advantages and disadvantages of sole trader organization now let us see what are the types of organizations so organizations can be sole proprietorship joint hindu family partnership family joint stock company that can be divided into private limited and public limited and cooperative society so we in each and every chapter we will be seeing in detail the different types of business organization the first chapter that is uh, uh, types of organization we will be dealing with sole proprietorship so this is a diagrammatic uh, representation of the forms of business organization see here business organization is divided into non corporate enterprise and corporate enterprise non corporate means non formal okay formal enterprises these are so non corporate enterprises are divided into sole trading concern partnership firms and joint hindu family business and corporate enterprises are divided into government private enterprises and cooperative societies now again government sector is divided into public undertaking and public utilities so government is always concerned with public so it will be everything will be controlled by the government sector government sections next is private sector that is coming uh, that is uh, having a subdivision of joint stock companies again uh, we saw that joint stock companies can be divided into private companies and public companies so we will be dealing with all these uh, forms of business organization in the forthcoming chapters so now we are going to see what is the sole proprietorship sole the meaning itself gives you the word itself gives you the meaning sole means single and proprietorship means ownership so the this is the first definition of sole proprietorship i have given you here the word sole which means single and the word proprietorship which means ownership so sole means single and proprietorship means ownership the legal business activities which is owned and controlled by an individual is called as a sole proprietorship so a business which is owned by a single person is called as a sole proprietorship the sole proprietorship is the form of business ownership which is owned and controlled by a single individual this is a definition given by b o v l so definition should not be changed each and every word which is quoted within the course should be clearly given by the student a sole proprietorship is a business owned by one person and operated for his profit this is a definition given by gloss and baker so in our textbook there is a definition which is given by wheeler sole proprietorship is the form of business organization which is owned and controlled by a single individual he receives all the profits and risk of all his property in the success or failure of the enterprise that is the definition given by wheeler and we have already seen that and one more definition we have uh, by j l hansen sole trader is a type of business unit where a person is solely responsible for providing the capital capital means investment for bearing the risk of enterprise and for the management of business so what is the risk so he has to undertake all the proceedings of the business and he has to reap all the profits and he will be uh, bearing all the loss that comes out of the business so that is called as the risk of enterprise enterprise means business and for the management of business so he alone is responsible for the management of the business no other persons will be involved in managing or administering the business activities so let us uh, see uh, what is uh, we have seen the definitions here which is given by uh, wheeler and uh, baker glosser and baker 
नेक्स्ट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ सोल प्रोप्राइटरशिप सोल प्रोप्राइटरशिप इज अ टाइप ऑफ बिजनेस यूनिट वेर वन पर्सन इज सोलली रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग द कैपिटल फॉर बियरिंग द रिस्क ऑफ द एंटरप्राइज एंड फॉर द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द बिजनेस दिस इज अगेन जेल हैंडसन फ्रॉम द अब डेफिनेशन वी कैन से दैट द सोल प्रोप्राइटरशिप इज द लीगल बिजनेस एक्टिविटीज वेर एन इंडिविजुअल ओन एंड कंट्रोल ऑल द बिजनेस एक्टिविटीज ओनली अ सिंगल पर्सन will be involved in controlling the business activities so um whereas it may be owned and controlled by a single individual or by a group of individuals who have entered into a formal or informal agreement to jointly conduct the business suppose if a person is having let us take a is having a son b then he can also be involved in managing the business but only the proprietor or the owner will be mr a so this is the definition which is given by wheeler and hansen we have seen and now we are moving on to the features so features of business or a single ownership already we have seen in the definition itself it is owned by a single person by an individual only one will be the owner of the business and uh, no other person will not be allowed or involved as an owner so already i gave you an example suppose he is the uh, owner of a shop then he alone is the owner and uh, his son can assist him but he will not be termed as the owner so he will mr a will be the single owner of the business ec of formation the formation of sole enterprise is very easy why is it very easy because only an individual is involved and the investment is also very less here when compared to other types of organization there are few documents only few documents are involved in uh, forming a business sometimes no documents to be needed for forming single enterprise direct relationship this is the third uh, feature owner always involved with the activities of single ownership business that is why owner has direct relationship with business here this feature also enables a person to take quick decision since he alone can involve in the business quick decision related to the business can be taken he need not consult anybody else that is one of the advantages of running the business in the nerathla end the decision edukkumo adu sikrame edukkamudiyum and the business owner nal next uh, let us see the next in my the feature investment of low capital only owner can invest capital from his own uh, uh, property or borrowed so or he can borrow from others also but he will be responsible for the payment of his debt he alone will be responsible so only owner can invest so let us for example take mr a is starting a new business and he is going to invest rupees 1 lakh in the business and he alone will be investing in the business no other person uh, will invest suppose if he has got a son b he also need not invest only a will be investing self management each and every task will be conducted by the owner so each and every task work will be done only by the owner and nobody else are involved in the business personal risk the personal property of the owner will be liable for sole proprietorship suppose if he has borrowed some money for the business purpose from his relative then he alone is responsible for the payment of business and nobody will be held liable for his payment of debt profit and loss full amount of profit or loss will be entitled by the owner where a business is run mainly for the purpose of profit but in no circumstance we can say that all the time the businessman will be receiving only profits year after year he can also incur sometimes loss so in this case the sole trader alone reaps the profit and also he has to bear all the loss also nobody else is going to bear the loss in this case government regulations next feature government has little or sometimes no rules and regulations about activities of the proprietorship why this is enabled because the business the uh, size of the business is very small so no um, strict rules and regulations are laid down by the government next is no separate entity 
the owner is not separate from the business owner and the director of the business are the same but this has also got one drawback here no separate entity this is a very very greatest drawback that sole trader form of organization suffers once when the owner is affected by disease or suppose he dies the business also is closed down or shut down or wound up so this is the greatest drawback in sole trader form of organization no separate entity it is one of the main feature also the business and the owner or the director or one and the same uncertain stability the stability of the sole proprietorship is not certain it is not permanent it is not having permanent existence in this society because any time the business may be wind up wound up for the reasons of loss death of the owner etc already i explained this point now now let us see what are the advantages of sole proprietorship one of the greatest advantages easy formation whoever has money can start a business there is no strict rules and regulations to be followed from the government side and they will not pose any rules and regulations so you if you have money if you have interest in doing a business anybody who has interest and money can start a business now optimum profit maximum profit whatever is earned by the business can be reaped by the owner himself low tax so heavy tax is not levied by the government in the case of sole proprietorship form of business organization because the size of the business itself is very limited small proper decision making i told you in feature itself decision making is one of the greatest trait that a businessman should have he should know when to make a correct decision so that the business can be run without any loss or it can be run at a profit so decision making is possible proper decision making is possible in case of, because he need not consult or he need not wait for others to decide what to be done or what not to be done in a business so proper decision making independence of the owner so independency is one of the main advantages of sole proprietorship in case of uh, profit uh, making profit earning or pro- enjoying the profit or in case of decision making he has independence to do anything of his own decision personal relationship with the customer since he is a sole trader he alone is managing the business so he is not dependent on anybody else for his managing the business as such he will be inside the business or he will be in the place of business so he will have direct contact with the customers he knows the taste preference choice need of the customers and he provides the quality of goods that is required or the quality of goods that is required by the customers better control since he is a single person he can have better control too many cooks spoil the broth this is a famous proverb you might have heard in english when too many people are involved in a business control then there will be chaos so in order to avoid uh, this confusion a sole trader is a, since it is a, he is a single person he can avoid this uh, confusions and he has better control over the business flexibility in operation he can shift his business to any place to any or he can even reduce his uh, business size or he can even expand his business size because the size itself i told you the investment is going to be within the limitations of his own property so he can either invest or expand his business according to the availability of capital with him there is flexibility in operation easy dissolution if a businessman wants to if a sole trader wants to dissolve dissolve means putting an end to the business or winding up the business if he wants to wind up the business since it is running on a loss easily he can do it he need not consult with anybody or he need not wait for any government regulations or restrictions or rules or anything so he can easily wind up the business if he wants when and where he wants so these are the advantages of sole trader disadvantages so 
it has also got certain disadvantages let us see unlimited liability so what is liability the amount that a sole trader or that a person owes to others is called as a liability the debt that he has to pay to other people that is called as liability so he has got sole trader has got unlimited liability so here suppose let us take mr ashok is running a business and in, he has invested a capital of rupees 1 lakh suppose he needs rupees 50000 for expansion of his business he can borrow it from others but in case of paying back in returning or in case of paying the debt he has to depend on his own property he cannot take it from anybody else or he cannot borrow from others he can borrow for his business but that has to be repaid only from his business property and nobody else so he has got unlimited in case of loss he has to pay from his own uh, property personal property will also be taken for paying his business debts limited capital so this is also coming under one of the disadvantages so he cannot set up a very uh, uh, he can only set up small sized business he cannot run a medium sized or a small sized uh, or a, large scale business cannot be expanded since the capital is very low no separate entity when something happens to the owner then the business has to be wound up already we have seen in the features separate entity no separate entity what does it mean the business the owner and the director are one and the same so there is no separation of business and separation of ownership so what about affects the owner that affects the business also so in case of debt the business has to be wound up in case of loss the business has to be wound up or shut down so that is no separate entity unsuitability for large scale business so sole trading business is not suitable for large scale business because the capital invested is very very less lack of stability there is no stability permanency stability means permanency there is no stability in running the business because whatever affects the owner or the trader or the sole trader that will also affect the business so it has to be wound up immediately lack of employment opportunity since sole trader business is owned and controlled by a single individual he cannot appoint any paid personnel for running the business that is one of the drawbacks if he if the business is run by paid personnel then he can go and he can go for other diversified actions but here sole trader since it is owned and controlled by a single person he cannot appoint any personnel paid personnel or other persons cannot be appointed limited size again this is uh, coming under the same topic as limited capital the size is very small so we cannot expand our business beyond a certain level lack of expert management if more than two persons are involved we can have expertise knowledge we can decide what to be done and what not to be done so two or three persons can give their ideas but since he is a sole person single person individual person he cannot have expertise knowledge in running the business or expert management cannot be done limited scope of expansion so expansion is not possible beyond a certain limit because already we have seen the amount of capital invested is very small so only depending on the amount of capital the size is decided since it is a individual business sole trading business we cannot extend the business beyond a certain limit so the next is suitable field for sole proprietorship where all sole proprietorship form of organization can be run business of minimum capital a business which requires minimum capital can be run on the basis of sole proprietorship product of limited demand a product which has got only limited demand that can be run only through the basis of sole proprietorship perishable goods perishable goods mean flowers vegetables uh, fruits which have limited time for consumption 
so these goods can be sold only on the basis of sole trading professional and <coughs> service oriented a professional that is a doctor a lawyer an advocate all these people can run their profession only on the basis of sole trading single individual is running the business or service and service oriented so all these are service oriented uh, uh, form of uh, business activities or service activities these can be run only on the basis of sole trading product of changing demand a product which has got uh, changing demands different changes are there in one particular period it will be demanded a lot and in another period it will be not in demand say for example umbrella production umbrella production will be much needed during the period of rainy season and uh, even though we use uh, umbrellas during summer season but it is not required at that time of summer but necessarily and compulsorily we need umbrellas or rain coats during the time of winter or rainy season so this has got a uh, changing demand so this umbrella or rain coats uh, have changing demand during a particular season they'll be having more of demand so this can be run on sole trading concern basis business of limited risk so a business which has got only limited risk of theft uh, then fire then uh, tra transport business transport uh, then all these risks are where they are limited they all can be done on the basis of sole trading mobile and temporary business so which can be a business which can be done on the basis of mobility so they can be for example you could see nowadays vegetables sold on the roads by using trucks and carriages they come to their to our doorsteps daily they sell fruits so all this come under mobile and temporary business this can be done on the basis of sole trading business so with this we are coming to the end of the sole trading uh, concerns uh, features advantages and disadvantages and you have been given the success story of murugappa group and success story of tvs group in your textbooks page number 25 and 26 so you could uh, just go through these two uh, success stories so that you will feel very interesting when you learn the lesson thank you students